Hi everyone and welcome to my channel. For those of you that are new here, I'm a software engineer, a security researcher, and a technical author based out of the Pacific Northwest. I'm lucky enough to have access to both the beta for Midjourney and Dolly 2, two of the most popular and powerful image generation AI tools on the market today. Because I have access to both tools, I thought it would be an excellent idea to do a comparison video walking you through the pros and cons of both Dolly 2 and Midjourney. The structure of this video is going to be quite straightforward and simple. Right now, you're watching the introduction. Next, I'll walk you through how to get access to both Midjourney and Dolly 2. Beyond that, I'll discuss the ongoing costs for using either of these tools should you decide to get an enterprise license. After that, I'll explain the basic usage of both Dolly 2 and Midjourney. Afterwards, I'll display some advanced usage, including parameters that allow you to modify the output images. And finally, I'm going to compare and contrast the output images created by both Dolly 2 and Midjourney using the same query so that you can get an idea in regards to what style these neural networks are capable of outputting and maybe make a decision on which one would be better for your use case. Gaining access to Midjourney is relatively straightforward, however you need to have an account on Discord. Now I don't know why they made this design decision, it seems as if you only need a Discord account for the beta, but you just go to the Midjourney website, you click join the beta, and you'll be redirected to Discord where you can go through an OAuth flow, and within a certain amount of time a bot will message you on Discord telling you you've been accepted into the beta when there is you know sufficient capacity or whatever other metrics they use to determine eligibility. In the case of Midjourney beta, you don't actually have to give them very much in the way of personal information. Once you get into the Midjourney Discord, you'll start off in the Getting Started channel, and then you need to click on the Rules channel, evaluate the rules, and agree to the rules before you can continue forwards in your trial. It's important to note that for this trial, you only get access to 25 queries, or 25 generated images, and after that you have to pay for a license. Luckily, the licensing for Midjourney is quite simple. If you go to midjourney.getbook.io, you can see the Billing and Licenses fact page, and here you can see a tutorial on how to subscribe through Discord, as well as the plans that are offered for Midjourney. One thing that's important to note is in Midjourney, because you have to do queries via Discord, if you're on the free trial, all of your queries are public. That means anything you search for will be available to other users to find in Discord search as it's going to be in a public channel. Now, if you pay for a paid version of Midjourney, you can bypass this. Bypassing the public restriction effectively allows you to generate images that nobody else has access to. In addition, when we look at the payment options, we notice that we're actually paying for GPU time not for images. Because of that, some images might compute a lot faster than others, and that's why they say approximately 25 images are included in the free trial, because it's actually approximately 25 images worth of compute time. The documents suggest that the average image takes about one minute of compute time in order to create. Unlike Midjourney, Dolly 2 offers a more business-centric, professional onboarding experience. You go to the Dolly 2 website, you click join the waitlist, and then from there you'll be sent an email notifying you that you are currently on the waitlist. Once availability pops up, you will get another email that tells you that you've been accepted into Dolly 2 alongside about 50 credits for image generation. Unlike Midjourney, which currently operates through Discord bots and is later planned to have a desktop command line user interface, Dolly 2 has a very professional looking web-based user interface where you can not only generate images, but you can see images that have been previously generated by other users, you can save images, and you can create collections of images somewhat akin to Pinterest boards. As noted prior, you get some free credits when you get into the Dolly beta, but beyond that you can purchase 115 images for $15, making it a bit more economical than Midjourney. Let's compare the generation of a complex 
image using both of these tools, starting with Dolly 2. The query I'm going to use is happy monkey eating fruit in the desert while wearing a bandana. This is a complex query because it involves a monkey displaying emotion. There's a verb, so it's eating, it's eating fruit. There's a location, there's a desert, and there's some descriptive terms in regards to what the monkey is wearing. So I figured this would be a good term to use comparing the two AI image generation tools. Now, as I start running this query in Dolly, you'll note that it's not particularly fast, but it's surprisingly quick compared to older tools of this style. And it gives us four images on the output, each of whom have a little bit of a cartoony style. The first one is a monkey wearing a blue bandana. The second one is a man that has no real correlation with the query. The third is a blue monkey wearing a blue man bandana and eating fruit. And the fourth and final one is my favorite, which really meets all the criteria that I had listed in my query. Note that because this is all done in the web user interface, I can actually see all my past queries on the right. Now we jump over to Discord so that we can make use of Midjourney, and it's a little bit more complicated. I'm in this newbies113 public room. I type imagine slash imagine followed by the same prompt, happy monkey eating fruit in the desert while wearing a bandana. And now as all these other users are typing in their queries, I have to hold on to my position in the scroll to see the status of the generation of my image. As you can see here, it gives me updates periodically. It says 16%, it says it's on fast mode, 33%, etc. But ultimately, it's quite difficult to generate an image using Discord as the user interface. As you can see, there's images flashing up and down the screen. I have to maintain my scroll position and it's just not very seamless. It's not very good as far as usability goes. And later on, it'd be very difficult if I wanted to find this image again, I'd have to search for the same exact query and hope Discord search can pull it up with all the hundreds of thousands or millions of images in this channel. That being said, even though it's a little bit slower than Dolly 2, Mid Journey is about complete. And when the image completes, it will be deleted from its original location in the channel and appear at the bottom. Now, in terms of relevancy, I got a blue monkey on all of these images. Unfortunately, I didn't end up getting a monkey wearing a bandana. There is a monkey on the top right that seems to have merged with a bandana, but what I wanted was not a blue monkey, but a monkey eating fruit while happy in the desert and wearing a bandana. So as far as context goes, I feel as if Mid Journey is a little bit worse than Dolly 2. Now if we jump back over to the best Dolly 2 image, we can see very clearly that we have a monkey with a blue bandana who is happily eating fruit in the desert. Now this monkey is also blue and that seemed to be a common theme as it understood blue but couldn't apply blue solely to the bandana. So as far as image generation goes, I think both the quality of the image and the context being applied to that image go to Dolly 2 alongside the user interface, which also definitely goes to Dolly 2. Now let's discuss the advanced functionality available within these two tools. If you go to the Midjourney documentation, you'll see Imagine Parameters Illustrated, which is a page that discusses ways in which you can add parameters to your query in order to customize them. These parameters include size, they include the quality, which of course takes more compute time. They even include some algorithm modifiers if you want more vibrant colors, less vibrant colors, etc. So for the casual user, you can make a lot of modifications to the output images just by adding predefined parameters to your query inside of Midjourney. Doll E2, on the other hand, does not offer these parameters, or at least does not document them in a source that is as easily findable as the Midjourney equivalent, but they allow enterprise users to fine tune their models or import their own model for Dolly 2 to learn based off of. That means if you're looking for a particular image that is an amalgamation of multiple images in a data set, you can provide your own image data set to train Dolly 2 so that you end up getting images that look more akin to the images in your own custom data set. What this tells me is Dolly 2 is definitely probably the correct option for an enterprise user, whereas Midjourney offers a lot more customization that doesn't require a lot of complexity 
or additional effort, simply add a couple parameters and get a modified output. Whereas Dolly 2, you have to go through the process of generating your own model and your own image set if you want to get a more customized output. In conclusion, I would say that it appears as if Dolly 2 is definitely the more professional tool with more enterprise level customization. If you want to put a lot of work in, you'll probably get more out of that tool. However, Mid Journey is a little bit easier to spin up, a little bit easier to get started on. And with Mid Journey, you're very lucky because there are some parameters for tweaking the output image that don't require a lot of effort. So for the hobbyist user, I think Midjourney might actually be a better tool if you can get over the fact that its user interface is not, quite frankly, just not as good and not as usable as that of Dolly 2.